this, this one will truly change your life. This one is so helpful. Okay. Maybe you guys heard a story, maybe happy. I'm gonna tell this one story and then we're gonna rock into it because I think it's, it's very, very important. One year ago, literally one year ago, if you guys saw on my Instagram, I posted this. Um, our cleaning business started October 19th, 2020. Okay, so October 19th, 2020 was three years ago. Year number one, from October 19th, 2020 to October 20th, 2021, our business did $138,000 top line revenue. Okay, that was year one. We came into the cleaning business with zero clients, zero experience, didn't know anything. Okay. Year two, from October 19th, 2021 till October 19th, 2022, our business did $364,000, I believe is what it was. Okay. So we doubled our business, right? In year two, with, which was good. Okay. Year three, October 19th, 2022 to October 19th, 2023, our business did over, did a million dollars, a million and five thousand dollars. Okay, it tripled in year three. Can anyone guess what the catalyst, what the driver of that tripling of the business was? Come on, come on, chat. There's only four people. Can anyone guess how our business went from 364000 to a million dollars in year three? Yes, come on. Good chat's going. Good. It was out of my frustration that I saw a million dollar company and nobody else did. But it was even more of my frustration that I had, I saw the million dollar company, but I only saw it up here. And so out of my frustration, I was like, how am I going to share my vision with the team? And that is where the million dollar cleaning business blueprint, it literally came from. I put everything that it took in order for us as a company to build a million dollar company. How many job ticket hours? How many cleaners did we need? How many hours did each cleaner need to average? How many cleans did we need to do per week? What was our average clean needed to be? How much did it take for us to, to make a million dollars if we broke that down to a week? These were all the numbers that all I did was figure out what it actually, like, what does a million dollar business look like? And then I tracked my data and said, here's where we're at. And then I was like, wow, we are a long ways off. We had to triple everything that we're doing in order for us to get to a million dollars. Initially, freaking sucked. I was like, we got a lot of work to do. But then after I just kept measuring it consistently, week in, week out, we kept on getting closer and closer and closer. 52 weeks later, we were there. So everything that you guys said in the chat is 100% right. And it all stems from this tool that we're going over today. Like I'm telling you, like that's how important this thing is. That's why every single person who's came to deck in today, all 14 have used this million dollar cleaning business blueprint. I've, I've adjusted deck in today a ton since it started. I've learned so much, but this is the one thing that's to stay the entire time. Okay. So literally, this is how important this thing is. So you guys are ready to rock and roll. Now you guys have all your sheets. You guys ready to do this thing? You guys excited for it? Okay. I don't care if you're excited for it. Renee's excited and that's all that matters right now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to unmute Renee here. And then we're going to walk through this all together. You don't have the sheet. James, will you drop the sheet again? So James will drop the sheet. It'll be in the chat. So get in the chat. That's where it's going to be. Scroll up if you need to. This is what your sheet should look like. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Make this even bigger. Okay, cool. Can everyone see this? So what you're going to do is you can do exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a copy. Okay. I'm going to call this Renee's $1 million cleaning business blueprint. Make a copy. Okay. Monkey see, monkey do. 
Okay, so we're gonna get rid of this one. We're gonna check our drive. You guys see this? We have all have our drives. This is the drive I want it to be under. Make sure it's under the correct drive that you want it to be in. And then I'm gonna make this bigger again so we can see. Okay, so um, and I'm gonna speak directly to Renee. So Renee, I'm gonna unmute you here. Okay, Renee, can I hear you? Yeah. Okay, I can hear you. Uh, cool. So first off, we give Renee some love, guys. We guys blow up the chat. Give Renee some love. Thank her for doing this. Thank her for helping you guys see exactly what it's done and being the brave one. Uh, if anyone's ever done one of these trainings before, you recognize like it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable, and but it's the uncomfortability that creates growth, and growth is what we're looking for. So the very the very thing that we try to avoid, the uncomfortability, is the thing that's going to help us grow. So Renee is going to grow the most from this. And if you guys ever get the opportunity to be on a call like this or to do something where you get to present and be in front of 50 people, 20 people, 10 people, hundreds of people, do it. So valuable. So valuable. Okay. Okay. So let me explain how the sheet works and then we're going to dive into the numbers. Okay. So yellow means you put it. So everything that is in yellow on the sheet means that you're going to change these numbers, okay? So you'll see here we have a man hour rate. We have the number of hours scheduled. Those are the things that we will adjust. That's on the cleaning tech side. So this, this thing that you're seeing right here is the cleaning tech side. And then right over here next to it, we have our client side. So if we think about the cleaning business, we really have two systems that are separate systems that we combine together to create one cleaning business. We have the cleaners and we have the clients. Okay, those are the two big systems that we have. They're actually independent of each other, but it's our ability to, to blend them together is what creates a successful cleaning business. Okay, so the first side, the cleaners, we wanna know how many cleaners and how many hours they worked. Okay, and then what is our average man hour? Those are the two numbers. And then we'll move over eventually to our client side and we'll need to know our revenue per clean, our average revenue per clean. And then we'll put, a, we'll put in the total number of weekly cleans in there to figure out how many claims we need to do in order for us to create a million dollar business model. Okay. It's really simple. So you can make this scary accurate. Okay. And the reason that I was so confident of us going from $300,000 a year to a million dollars a year, once I did this was that I actually used real data. And so this is the part that you guys can do follow along is you can use your actual data. And when you actually use your actual data, you look like you can break the future. You look like you have the Midas touch. You look like, like, you, like you know something that other people don't know. What you do is you use past data, like previous data is a good indicator of future progress. Okay. How many of you guys expect that the sun will go down tonight and it'll come back up again? There's lots of evidence in the past showing that it'll, there's a there's a high probability it'll do that. Okay. What's the likelihood that tomorrow, that Thursday, is going to come after Wednesday? Like, right? Like those are those are very like fun examples. Okay. But if you understand that past progress predicts future uh, growth, you understand how important tracking data is for you to be able to predict where you're going. Okay. Okay. So the first number that we're going to find is our man hour rate. Okay. So again, everyone can do this, your man hour rate. So Renee, do you track your man hour rate? Yes. Amazing. Does, in, does everyone know how to track your man hour rate? Does anyone know? So they're like, like what is man hour rate? Right. So some people might not know what man hour rate is. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna define this on the sheet. So man hour rate equals your weekly revenue divided by the number of hours of like basically build hours, right? So like we call this job ticket hours in our business. Not everyone uses job ticket hours. So I'm, I'm gonna try to make this as generic as possible for the number of basically a billable hours, right? So billable hours, okay? I'm gonna put this over here so you guys can see this. 
So for example, if we made, if you guys made $10,000 last month and you build the client for 20 hours, you would take $10,000, you divide it by 20 and you would get uh, $20, I think, right? I don't know what the math is exactly, but I think it's probably $20, okay? Oh, wait, I'll just do it. Don't assume things, Logan. My hypothetical example, don't assume a hypothetical example. What did I say? Did I say, I say $10,000 divided by 20 hours? What did I say? Is that what I said, Renee? Was that yeah. a hypothetical example? So that'd be $500 yeah. a man hour. So that would be very high, right? So yeah. let's actually use some actual data. So Renee, um, do you know what your, um, what your revenue was last week, for example? Uh, yeah, 56, 25. Cool, so I'm gonna do this as an example on here. Week one, revenue. Okay, we have 56, 25, okay. Mm -hmm. Week two, revenue. So the last six weeks, so, so basically last week, and then the last, uh, the weeks after that, you want in October? Yes. Yep. Oh, or just, just any of the last six weeks. So just any six weeks of data. I prefer the last six weeks just because it's probably the most accurate. Where, where rather if you did data from from June, it's just a it's, mm -hmm. it's just a little further off. So again, the more accurate we can do, the more recent we can do, the more the higher likelihood that we're going to be able to feel confident in this model. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So do you want September's revenue? Is that what you're asking for? Um, so you want to give me the whole month or can you break it down by week? Um, it would be a little, because I have the week prepared or the month prepared. So okay. it might be a little easier. Okay, so you have all of September prepared. Mm -hmm. So we have September's total month revenue. September, mm -hmm. September total gross, which is how much? Uh, twenty four thousand two hundred and seventy eight seventy one. Twenty four seventy eight. Yeah, that's probably good. Seventy eight. Twenty four thousand seven hundred seventy eight. Is that how much it was? Uh, twenty four thousand two hundred seventy eight dollars and seventy one cents. Okay, cool. And then, do we have two weeks in October that that we can use here? Yeah. Hang on. So my preference is a minimum of six weeks. If you guys want to do eight mm -hmm. weeks or if you want to do 12 weeks, if you want to do six months, like the more data, the better, but at minimum six weeks. Okay. So we have September. Now do we have two weeks in October? Yep. Um, $11,648.87. And that was, that was for all of October? That's just for one week in October? It's two weeks. That's two weeks. Okay. So- Eleven thousand yeah. what? Uh, eleven thousand six hundred forty-eight dollars and eighty-seven cents. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of this one. So this is two weeks in October. Mm -hmm. So this gives us six weeks of data. Okay, amazing. Okay, so we're simply going to add these two together. Equals sum. All right, cool. So we're at 36,000. All right, so the next thing we need to do, we need to have is for these weeks, we need the billable hours. So for those two weeks in October, so this is gonna be weekly. This is gonna be revenues, okay. So revenues. Now we need our billable hours. So for those, for, the, for these two weeks, 11,648, how many billable hours or job ticket hours did you have during that time? For the October weeks? Yes. All right, hang on. Cool, so again, this gives everyone an opportunity to do this while, we, while we're like, get to follow along. Is that's why having this data is super important. So if you're using the intelligence sheet or using the vision sheets, uh, these are great ways for you to be able to access data quickly. And so there's trainings 
inside the master class it's on the youtube as well it's under master class the master class i think is lesson number four data it's actually not one of the most highly watched videos i think it's a lot of the times is because we don't understand what we're going to do with data but when you start to see trainings like this it makes you really value how important tracking data is it was 219 cool um 0.5 perfect Okay, so we have 219.5 job ticket hours or billable hours for these two weeks in October. And then September, how many total, September total job ticket hours? September total was 439. 439, amazing. Mm -hmm. So we'll add these two together. Okay, cool. So here, guys, is how we're going to come up with our um our man hour rate what our average man hour rate over the last six weeks is again put it in the chat like you guys can see it on the screen but put it in the chat as well our man hour rate is going to be our weekly revenue divided by billable hours so i want you guys to put in the chat before i do this looking at these two numbers so if this is our our weekly revenue or our total revenue so actually this should just say total real total revenue it doesn't be weekly revenue just total revenue Total revenue divided by billable hours. What is Renee's average man hour rate? Put in the chat. Put in calculators. As you guys are doing that. So it's very simple. Equals, we're going to tie total revenue, which is going to be this number. And we're going to divide it by this number, which is a total billable hours. And we get this, which I don't know why that is. Oh, why did this go? Oh, that's silly. Equals this plus this. All right, there we go. Okay. So look at this. Renee's man hour rate, let's actually just make this simple. Let's just bring it down to the dollar, is 55. That's a coincidence that this, this default ended at 55, right? But that's what it is. It's the same. So 55. Is anyone following along right now? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull my, my chat up here. Oops. Okay. Cool. What's everyone's, if everyone's following along, what is your man hour rate? Okay. Ernest says 55. Who else is doing this? Show me. Okay. Who else is doing this? 57, 57, 65, 60. <laughs> 60. Okay, cool. That's okay. Okay. So a question we have right now is how to find billable hours. This is a great question. Okay. Does, it, does anyone in the chat, can anyone in the chat explain how to find billable hours? Renee, when you, when you find billable hours, how do you, how do you find it? Yeah. Off of our scheduled hours, like what we assign for the cleans, their job ticket hours. Yeah. And do you use, like, do you use a software like Zenmade or Jobber or something like that? I use Zenmade. Yeah. So if you're using Zenmade or Jobber, oh, so you use, you use Jobber, where he says. So inside there, uh, who uses Jobber that can, Raquel, who else uses, who else uses Jobber? Alyssa and Taylor do. Yeah. So if you guys will do me a favor and put in the chat, if you know exactly how to use, how to go find that report inside Jobber. Yeah. So while someone puts that in the chat, someone asks about like, which is the best, like, which is the best in, in reference to CRMs? Like, like they all suck a, a little bit. Actually, they all suck a lot. And so it's just, it's just picking which one sucks the least. 
Um, <laughs> and if you don't, if you don't have one that you're currently using, the only reason I would recommend, like, like I would like go hard towards doing ZenMate is because what we use. And if you want to follow our stuff, like we continue to give away everything away, all the information away for free. So if you just want to like have it even simpler, like use ZenMate for that reason. Uh, outside of that, I don't like they all like they all suck a little bit, right? Okay, so Alyssa says go to your reports, click visit reports, and then select the range of the dates, and it shows the exact times you have billed for. Okay. So that's how you find your, your manor rate. Uh, but basically like on each clean, it should have an assigned billable hour. So on each clean, it'll say that this clean is scheduled for four hours and you build four hours at $55, which means that this clean was uh, a $220 clean. That'd be an example of it, okay? So that's how you find man hour rate. And then you just need to figure out your total man hour rate per week, do that six times, figure out your total revenue per week over six times, you divide that number and you get 55. Okay. Okay. So we did man hour rate, we got 55. Now, the next step of this equation is we need to find out our average cleaner hours. Okay. So this one is super important. So over the last six weeks, using the same data, I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. We're going to find our average cleaner hours. Okay. So for these two weeks in October, so I'm gonna take this same, the same date over here. So we know these same two weeks in October, do you track how many hours on average your cleaners are working each week? Uh, yes. Okay, does everyone know how to do that? Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna give you the formula. Here's how, here's how you figure it out. Let me just drop this down a little bit here. Make room. Oops. Logan Lee. This is some fancy button here. Okay. So how we figure out what our average cleaner hours are is we take the our total number of billable hours. Okay. So this is billable hours. And we divide it by the number of cleaners we have. Okay. So for example, let's give you another example, maybe I'll give a better one this time. So using um, using Renee's data, let's say that we have a hundred billable hours in a week and we have five cleaners. We would take a hundred divided by five and we would get 20, which means that our cleaners on average would work 20 hours. What that means is that there's one cleaner who's working 30 hours. You probably have somebody who's working full-time. You might have another cleaner who's working part-time. That's 10. Or you might have somebody who's working 25 and someone else is working 15. But it ultimately averages to 20. Okay. That number is super important. So we have our, our billable hours for these two weeks in October. Oh, why did it do it like this? So we have two weeks in October. Hold on one second, let me just, two weeks in October. And then we have September total, so billable hours. So again, mine, I'm just taking the data from over here because we already have it. So we have 219.5 and we have 439. The next thing we do is like number of cleaners. So during those weeks, Renee, mm -hmm. those two weeks in October, mm -hmm. how many cleaners did you have during each of those two weeks? Six. Six. Okay. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And then for September, how many cleaners did you have during those times? And you might eight. have get eight. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Uh, what do I do here? Oh, I, I, I'm silly. September total. So it's two weeks in October, I'm trying to make this as consistent as possible. Cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to find the average of these two. So we take our total billable hours, 
this down. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, these numbers right here. We're gonna actually add all these up. Um, actually, what's the best way to do this? Total number, so what we need is we need the average number of cleaners. Yeah, this, is, this is a funky way to do it, but. So our average number of cleaners is gonna be seven in this case. Normally what I would do is I would just like look at each week. So I would say on, you know, for, for this week we had eight, 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 eight. So actually we can do the same thing. So what we do is we just take equals um, eight plus eight, oops, plus eight. So this, so this, so this signifies the four weeks in September. And then we're going to signify the two weeks in October of six. Okay, so it gets us to 44. But then we're going to divide that by six. Okay, so if you're on your if you're using your calculators, you would take each week the number of cleaners you have, divide it by each week, which is six, and our average would be 7.33. Okay. Again, we just gotta make this really simple. We're just gonna say seven. Okay. That makes sense. Same thing on this one. Normally we would take each week on this one. So um, I could actually do this 439 divided by four. So this is $110. So this is $110 a week. So plus 110 this week. And then next week was 110 plus 110. And then we take 220, divide that by two, which is one, 110 as well, plus 110 plus 110. Did, did, did everyone get that? Like this two, just 220 over two weeks, I divided by 220 divided by two equals 110. So this all actually averages out to be 110. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so if you're on a calculator, you have, you have 660 billable hours over six weeks, but we need to get the average. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna divide it by six. Okay, well, so it's 110, who would have thought? <laughs> okay, so now we have our average bill of hours and we have our average number of cleaners. Okay, so now we come back up to our equation up here. And so billable hours divided by number of cleaners. So we're gonna take, we're literally gonna just hit equals. We're gonna take this number and we're gonna divide it by the number of cleaners. And this is going to give us our average hours, our average cleaner hours worked, which is 15. Okay. So now that we know our average hours that each cleaner works is 15. Now, knowing that, Renee, mm -hmm. is that where you want it to be? No. Cool. So does, does anyone want their numbers to be higher? Does anyone want the average, their average cleaner to work 25, 30, 35 hours a week? I do, right? Yeah. The power of this model is that it doesn't account for what I want it to be. It accounts for the way it is. And the way that it is, is a better predictor of what my business is going to be in the next six weeks, the next 12 weeks, in the next six months. And so most people say, you know what? I really want my cleaners average 25 hours a week. And so they change their model to account for that. And they wonder why they can't actually hit their goals. Or they can't, they, they don't hit their numbers. It's because they base it on what they want it to be rather than the reality of what it is. Now, Renee, you want your cleaners to work more than 15 hours, correct? Yeah. Cool. Definitely. Me too, <laughs> right? You guys, everyone should because you're more efficient when your cleaners work more. Like yeah. your cost, your costs actually go down when your cleaners work more, right? Mm -hmm. The consistency of the work, the amount of work it takes is better when, you're, when you have full-time people who work more. Now, is that a reality for every single person on here or every single person on your team for that matter? No, it's not. So that's why we take the actual data. So it's 15. So we're actually going to predict your million dollar model based on 15, not what you want it to be. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay. okay. So if we see here that um, right now we have our man hour rate, right? But our cleaner average hours right here was 27. We need it to be okay. at 15. So in order for it to be at 15, we need to create a lot more cleaners, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this over here so we can keep this data. 
So you guys can see this. Okay. I'll put it over here for right now. Okay. So the next key to this is I'm going to create some rows here. I see it's messing with this over here. So if I can pull this back. So I'm going to create some more rows. So we're actually going to insert some more cleaners here. Okay. So, I know there's a I know there's a secret to doing this faster, but I don't know what it is. I think someone who came the deck in today the they they're more they're like I'm like are you a are you a uh, an Excel whiz? And they're like no. I barely get by and then they're like teaching me all these like fancy little like tricks and tips and i'm like yeah bro don't don't try to don't try to pretend don't try to pretend here okay so what we know here is that we need 352 job ticket hours okay and we know we, we need our average to be 15. so i'm going to show you i'm going to show you this two different ways because the way i like to do it is a little bit different but if you want to make this really, really fast and simple this is actually the way i recommend everyone start with it's just turn these to 15. Like it's just, it's simpler, okay? Shouldn't everything to 15, because that's what we know we want our average to be. So let's just turn it to 15 and see how many cleaners it takes for us. Okay, so if you guys see this right here, this is actually really cool. See how this is not moving? Can you can anyone guess why this is not moving, right? So part of using these spreadsheets is that we like that you're gonna break it. So if you look at this total, come over to the sum, you'll see C3 to C15. It's not accounting for these new rows that we added. So you need to come down here and you need to update this to cell 23, because that's what we're currently at. And if we continue to add more, we'll need to do that as well. But let's just put 15 in here and let's just see where we're at. I think we're, yeah, we're not quite there yet. So we still need more cleaners. Insert row above. Okay, let's see here, 15. See, I didn't work again. We need to update this again. C25, 345. Ooh, we're close. We're close. I think we need one more cleaner. Okay. I'll update this again one more time. Oh, it actually worked. 26. So let's come back up here and look at it. Oh, so we're we're a little bit over actually, right? So we can move this person down to 10. Uh, move this person down to 10 as well. Okay, so there we go. $83,000. So there we go. So another piece of that, which I totally skipped, I assumed, I shouldn't assume things, but in order to create a million dollar business, how much money do you make every single month? Oh. Right. And so I, I didn't do that math. Someone draw on this? Did I draw on this? I must've done that. Did I do that? Okay, um, so let's do the math on this because our monthly target is eighty-three thousand dollars. But how do we get that, right? So it's let's come over here again. Let's do some more math. I don't know where this yellow line came from. Sorry, guys. Um, so if we take a million dollars. So one. Does anyone know how many zeros that is? One. What is that? Thousand. Ten thousand. Hundred thousand. A million. So it's a million dollars. We divide that by twelve months. $83,333. Okay. So that is, if you hit, if you did $83,000 for 12 months, you would make a million dollars. Okay. So that's where this number comes from right here. $83,300. You'll see that these ones are in gray. So the ones that are in gray, like I did the calculation for you already. So this would be target. If you look up here, it's take C27, which is the number of job ticket hours times 
F3, which was our man hour rate. And that's how we get our weekly target. So the weekly target to make a million dollars a month is you need to make $19,250 in gross revenue every single week. Okay, so these ones are calculated already for you. You just need to know that your monthly target is $83,000, okay? And so it just takes this 350 and it multiplies it by 55 and that's how it gets $19,250. And then this number, if you look at the calculation here, it just takes D3, which is this number times 4.33. So that's how many months, that's how many weeks are in a year. Okay, let's take it 80,000. So, so Renee, if you want to have a million dollar business and based on your business numbers right now, you need 24 cleaners in order for you to have a million dollar business. So how many cleaners do you have right now? Six. Six, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you're like, I don't know why I don't have a million dollar business. I don't know why my business is growing. And if I ask you a simple question in two months, if I ask you a question in two months, and you guys only had one number to pick, or excuse me, you only had one number to ask her, like what number are you asking her? Which of these makes is the biggest driver for us to be able to predict whether Renee is gonna be closer or the same or further away from having a million dollar business? Put it in the chat. What's the number? What number are you asking for? If we have to pick between the amount of cleaners, the man hour rate, or the hours worked, which one of those is gonna be the biggest driver? They're all important. Correct. Yeah, this is good. The number of cleaners. The number of cleaners is gonna be the biggest driver of if in two months, Renee told me she has 12 cleaners. If I didn't know what the other two numbers are, I'm gonna say, you know, there's a really good chance that she's gonna be closer to a million dollars. Because it's so much easier to increase someone's workload than it is to onboard a new cleaner. Do you guys know how long it takes from the moment that you hire somebody to the moment that they are a, a solo cleaning tech? This was a number that I found in my business because I was like, I was, I was very frustrated by how long it took for us to hire, onboard, and train and make somebody a solo tech that I just figured, I had to figure out what the timeline was. So in our business, from the moment that somebody signs their agreement, their employee contract to say that I'm going to work for my cleaning company, it takes an additional 15 days total days, not work days, so total days for that person to become a solo tech where they're producing income for the business. That's after they get hired, they sign their documents. So like, there's obviously a process before that. Like, that's a long time. Renee, how long would it take you to take a cleaner from 15 hours to 25 or 30 hours if that person was willing and able and you had to work? Not long. Yeah, like, uh, like next week, like, like immediately, like, like you could give them more hours the very next day. I think I get scared, um, you know, because like when we switch from team cleaning to solo, we had a lot of like burnout situations happening. So I get nervous about it. Totally. So that's where, that's where like having this data allows you to feel confident in making, in, in, in investing because you're investing in people. You're investing sure. in marketing, which we're going to talk about next, and you're mm -hmm. investing in getting new clients. But when you have your data to know that, like, if the goal is eighty thousand dollars a month, then mm -hmm. you need twenty-four cleaners. So I'm going to be asking you if I'm coaching you, if I'm helping you, if I'm advising you. I'm going to say, how much money are you spending on ads? How many applicants are you getting? How many interviews are you doing? How many people are you hiring? Right, and based on that data. Those are leading indicators for me to be able to predict how quickly you're going to be able to grow your business or if your business is even going to grow. Yeah. Right. But when we know what we're shooting for, if you know that I need 24 cleaners, cool. That's simple yeah. math. I have six, I need 24. Right. That's it. Now room for improvement as well as like, as me advising you, like you definitely can increase this number right here, which is your average sure. hours is 15. Like I would definitely work mm -hmm. on that, but I would base it on mm -hmm. this. I would base my million dollar model on this because that's what your data actually says. Now, 
in six months, once you get to doing forty, fifty thousand dollars a month, redo it again. Like okay, I redid our model multiple times. I still redo it all the time because the more constant I do it, the more updated numbers, the more I can be able to predict it. Okay, and this model, like this this thing that I just showed you guys, like I've I've spent forty five minutes going over with it. Once you do this, you can literally do this in probably about five minutes. Okay. I just wanted to make it really, really simple, really walk through. But once you do this a couple of times, so my recommendation for everyone on here, if you, if you, if you already did this with the million dollar model, do it for half that, do it for a $40,000 a month model. If your business is doing 10,000, do it for 25, do it for 60,000. If you're already doing 60,000 or 80,000, do it for a hundred thousand, do it for 125, mm -hmm. do it for $2 million. Like it just starts to like change your thinking a little bit. When you, when you see what a $3 million cleaning business looks like, how many employees? How many object hours? Okay. Okay. So we did one side of the equation. We did the cleaner side, which is, in my opinion, the, the constraint in most cleaning businesses that I see in this group and most people come back in a day is this is the constraint is hiring, onboarding new cleaners. Okay. Now let's move over here. Let's move over to the client side. Client side, super important. This one, we're going to find our revenues per clean. Okay, so same thing we did last time, revenue per clean. Do we know how to find revenue per clean? It is the weekly revenue, weekly total revenue, or just, it doesn't do weekly, just total revenue. Total revenue divided by total cleans. Okay. So we need some data again here, preferably over these, these same six weeks. So if I have these two weeks in October in the, in the September total gross, um, all right, Renee, just two weeks in October. What is our, um, we have our revenues down here again. So revenues are right here. And what else do we need? Oh, we need weekly total clean. So let me just grab this number right here first. So these are our revenues. So revenues. And now we need um, ah. um, total cleans. Okay. And so for those two weeks in October, how many total cleans did you have for those two weeks in October? One second. Oh, well, you didn't tell me to get this part ready. Good. Everyone else is everyone else is thanking you because they're trying to do this as well. <laughs> I'm sorry. So this is, um, yeah, this is this is why the data is so important, and you have the data. That's why I asked you to do this. Well, I have it. I just didn't have the exact what you what you asked me for. So I'm sorry. Because I know you did. You have it right there. <laughs> like the fact that you have it tracked is the most important piece. Like most people don't even have this data <laughs> tracked. Where like they, like it's hard it's hard to go back and find the data track the data and then continue to do it. Like now we're just, like now we're just having difficult finding it because I didn't I didn't do this. I didn't prepare you ahead of time. I know. So I wanted you I to go know. through this just like everybody else. Okay. All right. Um 58. Okay. So the, so for those same two weeks in October, you had 58 cleans, correct? Yeah. Okay. And then September. How many cleans, how many total cleans did you do in September? Mm, 116. Amazing. Okay. So just like we did before, we're going to add these up. Okay. So equals this plus this. So we have our total revenue for these last six weeks. And then we have our total number of cleans. So equals this plus this. Okay. So these are the last six weeks of data. And we're simply, we're gonna come up here, we're gonna click equals, we're gonna take our total revenue and we're going to divide it by our total number of cleans. 
and we get what our total revenue per clean is, which is $206. And let's make this really simple. Cool. Does that make sense? Total number of revenue over six weeks divided by the total number of cleans over six weeks gets our average revenue per clean, which is $206. Okay. So that $206, we're gonna plug it into this little yellow area where it says like revenue per clean, we're gonna use our actual data. So we're gonna plug in 206. And you can see that our monthly target up here went to 85,000. Put in the chat, do you guys remember, what does our monthly target need to be in order for us to make a million dollars a year? This is super important. Thanks, Bobby. Alicia. Cool. So we need to get this to 83. So which means we actually can bring our weekly total cleans down, right? So, we're, so this number right here, this weekly total cleans, this is a model. So we need to, we're basically just typing in random numbers. Like I just put in zero for here, for example. And if I typed in 10, like, okay, this will, so if we're averaging 206 revenue for average revenue per claim is $206. And we're doing 10 total claims per week. That means we're generating $2,000 a week or $8,919. Okay. But our goal is 83,000. So I'm going to type in 50 here, for example, and this is going to get us to 44,000 a month. We need more cleans. Let's type in 60. Okay. We need more cleans. Let's type in 70. We need more cleans. Type in 80. Still need more cleans. Let's type in 90. We're getting closer. Let's go 91. Close. Let's try it again. 92. Close. Let's try 93. Oh, close. 94. Oh, there it is. 83,846, a little bit over. Okay. So we need 94 cleans per week, which is great. Okay. So now we know how many cleans is that per day? Renee, do you guys do cleans on the weekends or do you guys only do it five days a week? Only five days a week. Amazing. So if we wanted to figure out how many daily cleans, we would simply take this number divided by, or excuse me, we would take 94, okay? I'm just gonna make another number up here. So cleans per week or cleans um, per day, excuse me. We could just go equals 94 divided by five because they're cleaning five days a week. So you need to do 18, you need to do 19 cleans a day. Okay, that's doable. Yeah. See, you guys hear that? You see that? We're breaking we it do down. It. Breaking yeah. it down. Okay. 19 cleans per day. Now, if we had six cleaners, that's three cleans per day. That's not possible. But if you had 15 cleaners, is that possible? Yeah. Or 10 cleaners? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. See, see how it's making sense? Well, we had cool. 10 cleaners at the beginning of September, but we let some people go over the last few months that just weren't working enough hours. Totally. And again, you were like everybody else. You have the same problems everybody else does. Like I have that same problem. Yeah. Everybody else yeah. on this, there's I don't know, people on here are still 50 people. Like we have the same problems, right? That's why knowing what your leading indicators are, how many applicants do you have coming in? How many interviews are you doing? Like that is how I can be able to predict mm -hmm. how soon you're going to be able to hit a million dollars. Okay. Okay. So you need 19 claims per day. Now, this is pretty cool too. Like, you like that? Maybe I'll show you guys one more thing is like, how, many, how much money do you make per day? So $80,000 a month, that probably seems like a lot, right? $19,000 a week, maybe it seems like a lot too. But how much revenue do you make per day? Let's just do that math too. Okay, listen. So revenue per day. Let's take this 19250 That's the weekly. Let's divide that by five, because we're doing five days a week. You need to make $3,850 a day. Okay. Have you made 300, have you made $3,850 in its, in its entirety before? Have you made that much money in your business? Like in a day? No, but not, we've, no, made 20, not, not we've made 20, we've made $2,000. No, not a day. but I have mean, you made, yeah. have you made three, $3,850 in the lifetime of your business? Oh, sure. Cool. Have you done that in a week before? Oh yeah. Have you done it in four days before? Yeah, we've done it in two days. <laughs> okay, so that means you're only one day away. You're only, you're only one day yeah. away. Yeah, we can do that. We can yeah. definitely, that's doable. Okay. Is this making sense, guys? Like, this is actually how you do it. It's like, you break down these huge goals. You break it down into things that you can, I can comprehend that. I can make $3,800 a day. I can have 24 cleaners or 20 cleaners, whatever your model is out to be. I can charge $55 a man hour. 
that's it. Like, this is it. This is what I did one year ago to take us from 300,000 to a million dollars. And I, cont I consistently did it over and over again, right? And I, and I tracked this data first. And then going forward, I measured what a man hour rate was every single day, or excuse me, every single week. I accounted for what our, how, what our cleaner average was every single week. I accounted for how much money we were making every single week and every single month. I was accounting for this revenue per clean. Okay. This is it. Like, this is how you do it, guys. And this is a skill. And so you guys all have this training. My recommendation is, is you practice this. Okay. You, you go down here, you click duplicate, and you change this to something bigger or smaller. I don't care which way you do it. But now you say $40,000 a month. And you create a new model. And you say, now I'm going to do based on those same numbers. And now I'm just going to go to $40,000 a month. So all I need to do here is I need to eliminate. Watch this. I'm going to show you guys to do this thing really fast. This is actually how fast I do it. This is why I can do it so quickly. Is that. Boom. So. 19. There we go. So. Now. Same cleaner average, 15, same an hour rate, but now the goal is $40,000 a month. Now we just need 11 cleaners averaging 15 hours a week at $55 a man hour to make $40,000 a month. Renee, can you do that? Yeah, definitely. Heck yeah. Okay. Same thing over here. Let's change this monthly target. It's just it's gonna be half, right? So 90. So I think half that is about 40. So let's just let's just go 40 as an example. I think it's probably a little shy. So 40 cleans per week. Again, we the revenue per clean we keep because that's our actual data. This number of weekly total cleans is for us to model how many cleans we need to do. So 40 divided by or excuse me, 41, 44, 45. Okay, cool. So we need to do 45 cleans a week, which is how many cleans per day? It's right here. Nine. Nine. Can you do that? Yeah, definitely. There you go. Right? Like this skill set, this is it right here. This is how you do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for everybody out there who wants like more, like what I actually like show as the, like, if you want to like look at our cleaners, what they actually do. So what I do is I, lo I look at this job ticket hour. So it's 170. And on every single team, there's always going to be three segments. You're going to have your A players, you're going to have your B players, you're going to have your C players. And so the way that this really looks is that you're going to have, these top cleaners are going to be like 30. Okay. For example, then you're going to have 25, 25, 25, and you're going to have uh, 20 and 20. And then you're going to have our 10, 10, 10. And then, so this is probably actually going to come down a little bit. So let's actually make these guys 20. Dum. Okay, so we're 19. So we need these to be 20. This is literally what I do, is looking at, like this is gonna be a lot more accurate rep representation. So move this down, 20, 15. And this needs to be 10 as well. And this is 12 and our same cleaner average, 15. So there you go. So this is what it's actually gonna look like. You're gonna have a couple top cleaners who do work the most. You have people who are 25, 25, and then you're gonna have people in the middle do 20, 15, 12, 10, right? This is what a more realistic representation of your team looks like. Uh, ideally, the goal is to push the bottom up. So all these people mm -hmm. who are working 10, you wanna to try to get them to 15 to 20. The people who are at 25, try to get them to 30, 35. And like, you just keep leveling the expectation of your cleaners. Okay, so um, this is the million dollar cleaning business blueprint, like something that if you, okay. So the first piece of this is this, I, I got about five minutes and I got another call. So I'm going to just share with you guys the last couple of five minutes. I'm sure you guys have questions, but uh, if you guys are down, if you guys are down to do a second piece of this. There's actually a second piece that is the next piece, right? So the first piece is that you guys have the model and then you have the model. 
does everyone feel comfortable that you can actually do this yourself? Like, Renee, I know that I did it with you, but do you feel confident that when you, I share this with you, have this doc that you can create a $60,000 a month model? Do you feel confident yeah. in that? Yeah. Cool. And if you had access to this training and this recording, could you definitely do it? Yeah, I'd have to watch it again. Probably. I'll definitely watch it at least four more cool. times. <laughs> Amazing. So where can you find this training at? Where's it going to be? It'll be in the master class for sure. That's right. It'll be in the master class. So that's where you guys can go find this. Uh, again, practice the skill set. But the second piece of this is super important. Okay. So the second piece of this is being able to take that data of your goal and figure out where you are at and close the gap. Okay. And so, like I said, one year ago, we started doing this. And I'll show you guys what this vision sheet looks like now is that. We have this data right here of the goals. You'll see job ticket hours, average cleaner, number of cleaners. Does that look very familiar to you guys? Okay. We track this stuff every single week and we have since last July. Okay. This, this is going forward. So this would have been the previous week. And we just match up with where we are. So we can see that we're 135 away from us hitting $125,000 a month. You can see that we're, our, our cleaner average, we're eight lower than we need to be. And we're four cleaners lower than we need to be. So like, that's the gap. Like this is the gap. This is the goal. This is where we're at. And each week, the goal is to close the gap. Okay. Same thing. The client side, monthly revenue, weekly revenue, revenue for clean, weekly total cleans. Does that look familiar to anybody? So last week, for example, you can see that we're fifty-six thousand dollars away from hitting the goal. We were eight thousand dollars away from hitting the weekly goal. Our revenue for clean was less than twenty dollars, and our total cleans was less than was was twenty-eight less than it needed to be. So we have the gap right there. We have the goal. And we see where we're at. And so every single week, I'm like, what do we need? Like, what's the constraint? What's the constraint? Cleaners. Cool. We need more cleaners. We need more cleans. We can't get more cleans because we don't have cleaners. Boom. We need more cleaners. That's, that's the problem, right? Or actually, actually, if you guys want to see what this day looks like, you can see that cleaners are only averaging 22 hours. So our cleaners are our full time. We actually don't have enough cleans. That's actually our constraint right now. We need more cleans. We need to have 28 more cleans on the schedule. So that means that we need, to, we need to spend more money on marketing. You can see here how much money we're spending on marketing, right? Like it just keeps going. Like this is the vision sheet. This right here is the key. This is, this is the only thing that I do with my team. So the reason why this is so, so valuable guys, when, when I share this with you, the reason that you guys can do this, like here's why it's so valuable. In the entire year, how many cleans did I do? Some of you guys know this answer. Some of you guys don't. If you don't know, you can just sit in the chat and wait. But someone like Anna Harris, she knows. I did zero cleans. Anna, anybody else who knows? How many sales calls did I do? How many people did I get on the phone with and say, buy my cleaning service? Also zero, correct. How many interviews? How many cleaners did I hire last year? How many people did I get an interview with and say, you know what? I think you're a good fit for our culture. Zero, correct, right? The only thing that I did for our cleaning company is, is that vision sheet I showed you with is me having the model and saying, here's where we're at, here's where we need to be. I see the constraint. I see that we need to hire more cleaners. So I'm going to say, we need to double our ad spend. We need to get more people. We need, to, we need to reach out to more applicants. We need to have more interviews. We need to have more applicants pass. Why, why are these people failing? Why can't we get more people through? Okay. As an example, client side, spend more money on ads. We need to hire more salespeople. We need to get them to nurture the, 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 the lead list better. We need to upsell more people. We need to convert more people into recurring clients, right? And so I'm just telling people what to do and they're doing it. And the reason why that's really important to, for you is because that's all I can do for your business. I can just tell you what to do and you do it. I'm not gonna do it for you. I don't do it for my business. I'm not gonna do it for your business. And so the reason why that's valuable is because Katie, my wife, who trusts me the most, by the way, um, like she believed in what I said and she just did it. Now, the people, for example, come to Decade a Day, that's why the reason why they have a lot of success is because they trust me. I just tell them what to do and they do it, right? And so a lot of you guys, even, you don't have to come to Decade a Day to trust me, but if you trust me and you listen to enough of this content, you say, you know what? I, Logan would tell me to get more cleaners. You get more cleaners, you do it, and your business will grow. Because the same advice I'm giving you is the same advice I'm giving to my business, right? And I'm doing the same amount of work for both. So for, I'm not doing a weekly meeting with anybody else's business. Um, however, I'm just sharing with you that like, this can work for you because 
It's not dependent on me. I am not special. Not even a little bit. Hopefully you guys have, have got that point to now is that like, it's not me who's doing this. I can just see it. Like I'm like, I'm a visionary. I can see what's happening. And I want to give that vision to you and for you to be able to say, you know what? I can do this too. Cause that's the truth. Okay. And so if you guys are down and are interested in this, doing a second part of this, where we actually go over the vision meeting and sharing like that sheet, like that's also another thing I do inside deck in a day, which I don't know if I've shared that before. I don't, I don't, I don't think I have. If I have, please forgive me, but I'm not sure if I've actually walked someone through how to create a vision meeting uh, based on the million dollar model, like putting those two things together, like that's the next step of this. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. But don't let me know right now, put it in the Facebook group because I think it's important that people get value from this. The more people that get value from it, the more this thing grows, the more success that Renee has in her business. All of a sudden someone's like, Renee did this thing and she didn't pay any money and she like was able to grow her business. Like I could do that. And people, the skepticism shrinks, optimism raises, and that becomes really powerful. So by you guys sharing your success stories, so some of you guys have used the vision sheet. Some of you guys have used the million-dollar model to help grow your businesses. Continue to share your stories. Some of you guys that are just in the beginning of it, like continue to put your head down, do the work. And like one of your cares and goals is that you sh are sharing your success. And it, you know what? It makes you feel good while you do it, right? It does. But the reason that you're doing it is to help and to serve. The more that you help and serve, the more it comes back to you, right? And Renee, you and I had this conversation a couple weeks ago. And so like the more, the more that you serve, the more that will come your way, whether you want to it or not, it'll come back around. Okay. So put your head down, do the boring work, which is building this million dollar model, be consistent with it, know what the gap is and find ways to close the gap. Okay. And if you guys want to do like a vision meeting where we actually show you that process of closing the gap every single week, the consistency part, that, that hard part, uh, go into the Facebook group and talk about this training that you guys got value from it. And if we get enough, we get enough traction and enough momentum and people are like, what's this, what's this? Like go watch this training. Then let's do a second, a part two to this. We'll actually go over the vision meeting and how to be able to identify the constraint and then work at it every single week. So like it becomes the probability of you achieving success. It becomes, it becomes math. It just becomes logical. Okay. So thank you guys for hopping on here today. Renee, give, give Renee some love. Please give Renee some love. Um, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate y'all. And again, next week we have Shark Tank, Mr. Shark Tank coming in. So please, please be on that one. Please show up to that one. Again, like this one right here, this one will like, this one will transform your business. This will literally like put you in position to have a million dollar company. Uh, the one next week is definitely more for funsies, more for that experience, more for proximity. Like this is when you can tell stories to your friends, to your family about that. Like you were on the same Zoom call as a Shark Tank shark. You got to ask questions to that. Like that's like a fun one. Uh, this one is like super valuable. Uh, like you can use this and it will serve you for the rest of your life. Next, next week is fun. You need a little bit of both, right? We're, we're, we're all trying to have some fun while we're growing businesses. And we do that as a community, as friends together. So appreciate all you guys. Happy, uh, happy Wednesday. We'll see you guys next week. And we'll see you in the Facebook group. Go blow the Facebook group right now. There's 3,800 people that don't know what the masterclass is. Like, what the heck, bro? Like, this is one little segment of the masterclass that they could, they're missing out on. Like, go help somebody. Go help serve the community. Let them know that this exists. So I appreciate y'all. Happy Wednesday. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.